So I teach A-level physics at a college in the UK. Let's see how I do at a GCSE paper. I've downloaded the 2020 OCR Physics A GCSE paper three. I'm going to be solving it with you guys. Hey, okay, well, question one. I'm gonna start off with the multiple choice. Which of the pairs are contact forces? So air resistance and gravity, no, that's not, not it. Gravity can act at a distance, friction and gravity, once again, that's not it. Magnetism can act at a distance, no contact force and air resistance, that seems right. So let's put D as the correct answer. Okay, so question two, we have a student uses 2,250 joules of energy climbing up the steps. It takes 215 seconds to climb up the steps. Calculate the power of the student. We're even given the formula. How convenient. So remember, work done is equal to the energy that's been provided. So therefore, we can calculate the power as uh, simply the energy, which is 2250, which is equal to the work done, divided by the time taken, which is 15 seconds. So 2250 divided by 15 is going to give me... 150 watts the correct answer is b okay moving on we have a motorbike traveling along a straight flat road the arrow represents the horizontal forces acting on the motorbike which motorbike is traveling at a uniform velocity okay so the forces need to be equal and balanced for the bike to be traveling at uniform velocity the only possible answer here is c because we have that force from the engine pushing the bike forward and we also have air resistance acting in the opposite way b is not correct because we may even if the bike ha is moving but it's got its uh, engine cut off it will still be experiencing an air resistance in the opposite way okay so moving on to the next one we have an elephant which has a weight of 60 kilonewtons. Its four feet have a total area of 0.75 square meters in contact with the ground. Calculate the total pressure exerted uh, that the elephant exerts on the ground. Okay, so pressure just force known to the surface divided by the area of that surface. Very convenient. I'm just going to be quite careful to convert the kilonewtons to, to newtons. So remember, our pressure will then be equal to 60,000 divided by 0.75. So we can just calculate that here. So 2, 3 over 0.75, which is going to give us 80,000 pascals. So the correct answer is D. Okay, moving on. Question 5. A student plots a force extension graph for a material which row in the table correctly identifies part P and Q of the graph. Okay, so this one here is a really interesting one. Um, part P is elastic for sure. So as soon as we reach the elastic limit, which is just between the two points, the force is no longer proportional to the extension and we're entering the plastic region. So P is elastic and part Q is the plastic range. So the correct answer has got to be B. Okay, question six, which statement explains why atmospheric pressure changes as you climb up a mountain? How exciting. Um, the number of molecules above you decrease the further you move from the center of the earth. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Literally, the higher you go, the less air there is. That's why it's harder to breathe. That's why pressure changes, etc. So I don't even need to read the rest of the answers. I know that A is correct. Actually, just to be sure that we've not made a mistake, uh, let's have a quick read. The density of the air increases the further you move from the center of the earth. Nope, that's definitely not correct. The density actually decreases. Gravity increases the further, ooh, definitely not correct. Temperature decreases the further you move from the center of the earth. Well, generally true, but doesn't really explain the fact that atmospheric pressure changes. So the correct answer has got to be A. 
Okay, question seven. Which statement is an example of Newton's third law? This here can be sometimes tricky and is very often misunderstood by students. So let's have a read for the answers. Doubling the engine force on a car doubles its acceleration. No, this is um, um, more Newton's second law. Doubling the engine force on a half uh, on a car halves is acceleration. And if that's the case, there's something seriously wrong with the car. When a ball is rolling on a table, it continuously rolling at a steady speed. This is Newton's first law. When you clamp your hands, each hand experiences a force. On the other hand, the correct answer is definitely D. Remember, Newton's third law says that two bodies um, interact. Let's say body A and body B could be your hands clapping. Um, they will experience equal and opposite force. They will exert equal and opposite forces on each other. Okay, eight, a student inserts a magnet into a coil of wire. What is induced across the ends of the coil of the wire? So there's gonna be some induced EMF if you're moving this. So induced EMF will be potential difference. So the correct answer is C. Okay, which of the following graphs shows the typical output difference for a dynamo? Okay, this one here is Kind of interesting. So it's definitely not D, it's not the square voltage. Um, we wouldn't be able to differentiate between A and B because the only difference here is um, just the, the sign, the initial position. Um, the correct answer will be B. I'm pretty sure, even though I've not actually looked at the um, dynamos for a while, that, they're only pre that, that uh, their output is producing um, a voltage with, uh, with only one sign. Okay, so final answer B. Moving on, question 10. A student investigates what happens when she heats a beaker of water. Okay, so we just have a beaker of water. A, the temperature increases, the state changes, uh, which row in the table describes what could happen when the water is heated. Uh, okay, well, the temperature uh, should definitely increase, so it's either going to be A or B. Uh, the state could change depending on the amount of, um, of temperature. The energy stored in the water changes. Okay, this one here, let's, let's have a good think about this while I'm just drinking my cup of coffee. Um... Okay, so the temperature increases, that's fine. Um, the state could change, the energy stored in the water could change as well. By the energy stored in the water, I imagine they mean the potential energy, uh, which normally would changes when um, the distance between the molecule is actually changing so i'm going to go for a as the correct answer okay 11 a wire is placed between the holes of a magnet perpendicular to the magnetic field lines uh, okay which direction will the will the wire move when there is a current flowing Okay, so this one here we could, um, so question 11 we could solve using the right hand rule. Now to use the right hand rule, we, all we need to do is we need to take our right hand, um, our first finger will be the direction of the current, our second finger will be the direction of the field lines, and in this case the field lines are going from north to south along here. So remember field lines always flow north to south. So just um, if we were to apply our left hand rule, so let's, uh, let's do this. Um, first of all, I am going to do that. So let's see if you guys can, can see, uh, meaning that the wire should be moving down. Okay, 12, a magnet is used to pick up a paper clip. Which statement explains why the paper clip is picked up? 
Interesting. Okay, so this is a very, very deep question about magnetism. So the, the magnet is a permanent magnet and the opposite pole has been induced on the top of the paper clip. The magnet is a permanent magnet and the same pole has been induced at the top of the paper clip. The magnet is a temporary magnet and the opposite pole has been induced at the top of the paper clip. The magnet is a temporary magnet. Okay, so I'm going to, there's no electrical circuit connected to this, so it looks to me like it has to be a permanent, um, it has to be a permanent magnet. If there was a circuit, maybe a current running through it, then you will be able to pick up the paper clip. And um, so we're gonna need the opposite pole because of two opposite poles are going to attract. So the, the magnet is a permanent magnet. The opposite pole has been induced at the top of the paper clip. So I'm gonna go with 12A. Okay, 13, a student is measuring the power of different machines. Which two measurements show the same power that has been measured? So 10 gigawatts and 10 to the power and 1.0 times 10 to the power of um, 10 watts. Okay, so giga is 10 to the power of nine. Okay, so then if we have 10 gigawatts, we're gonna have 10 to the power of 11. So 10 gigawatts is actually equal to 10 multiplied by 10 to the, 10 to the nine. Okay, yeah, so uh, which will actually give me 1 times 10 to the 10 watts. Okay, so 4 kilowatts is 4 times 10 to the 3. 10 milliwatts is 1.0 times 10 to the 3. Uh, 10 to the power of minus 3, sorry. 10 megawatts is going to give me 10 times 10 to the power of 6. So the correct answer is A yet again. So 13 is A. Okay, 14, what is the change in pressure when a diver moves from a depth of three meters to a depth of eight meters? Uh, assume that the gravitational field strength on Earth is 10 newtons per kilogram and the water density is 1,000 uh, kilograms per meter cubed. Uh, use an equation from the, data, from the data sheet to actually help you. I uh, don't have the data sheet, I've not actually downloaded it, however, we teach this and luckily at A level we actually derive this equation. The pressure is equal to the density of the water times the change in height times the gravitational acceleration. So if our density is equal to a thousand, if our change in height, now they're going from uh, a depth of three meters to a depth of eight meters, and we're just looking for the change in pressure. A little trick here so we're going to need to multiply this by 5 then we're going to multiply this by 10 yet again so this is going to be 5,000 times 10 which is 50,000 pascals so the correct answer will be B okay 15 an astronaut on the moon lifts a 5.5 kg object a vertical distance of 50 centimeters calculate the potential energy gained by the object well given the gravitational field strength on the moon which is 1.6 newtons per kilogram so um what i'm going to do is just use the fact that e is equal to mgh so the object is 5.5 multiplied by 1.6 and then it's going up a vertical distance of 50 centimeters. I'm going to convert those to meters, so it's going to be 0.5. And I'm uh, actually going to use a calculator for this one. So 5.5 times 1.6 times 0.5 is 22 over 5, which is around 4.4 joules. And the correct answer is a okay so i've just finished marking the multiple choice questions and i'm pleased to say i've got all of them correct interestingly i was actually a little bit worried because there was a string of around four questions 
the answers of all of them were A. And uh, it's an interesting psychological phenomenon. I, as I was solving it, I was a little bit worried I might have done a silly mistake somewhere. But yeah, luckily not. Now I'm going to be solving the rest of the paper in a separate video. Let me know if you guys want to see that in the comments below. But in the meantime, you need to have a look at this video in which we save a kitten with the power of physics. And that is just over there.